Hello and thanks for watching another Sunday case study. This week we're going to look at Gandhi's palm. And I thought it would be particularly interesting to point out a few things here. Uh, Terry Stokes, my mentor um, and palmist, has already read this person's palm and I've read his analysis. And I just wanted to point out a few things here and kind of bring a lot of what he's already said to light but also to uh, point out a few of my own uh, findings as well. So Terry actually sent me uh, Gandhi's palm print. He has it himself. It's actually got damaged in his shed, but he's managed to repair it here and um, he, he sent it to me. So I'm going to point out a few things about this person's palm. And at the end of this video, my number seven, this point seven here, I'm going to point out uh, what assassination looks like in the palm and uh, I think I'm pretty sure uh, this is what this means here uh, and Terry also pointed this out as well so so let's get into it the first thing that I really noticed about this person's palm was the short Jupiter finger notice it doesn't actually reach past the first uh, the halfway mark of uh, the first phalanx of Saturn and this is um, you know for me quite obviously an inferiority complex and you know the Jupiter finger is ambition ego it is authority decision making and when we see a very sort of squared off um, Jupiter finger like this it's a very sort of critical nature but because it's so short it shows self critical nature and that's essentially what this inferiority complex is it's just someone who's who has actually a low self-esteem low self-worth who thinks very little of themselves a, a low and um, you know I don't want to say weakened ego but it has a very low a, a very you know no ego essentially Notice how Jupiter, whoops, notice how the Jupiter finger is very thick though, it's very chunky, it's very wide, and so the abilities, the strength of these Jupiterian qualities are very powerful, profound. So whilst this person has incredible leadership skills and, you know, an, an, an authoritative sort of manner about this person, they lead by example. They are very able to make decisions for other people, to lead others, but in terms of their own, the, the, themselves, they don't have a, a great sort of drive or ambition necessarily, but they do have that for others, if that makes sense. So, uh, And that was really what shocked me initially when I looked at this person's part. I actually thought, this can't be Gandhi's hand. You know, I was expecting to see, uh, you know, this profound... And, and strong sort of sense of uh, spirituality with a, a really long and pronounced and pointed uh, Jupiter finger. But actually this was really telling and, and shows insights into who this person is and, and why uh, they think and feel the way they do in terms of judgment and authority and as a, in particular their ego. And, and if we had seen a, a sort of a pointed index finger that was quite long, it would show... Uh, you know, especially this long, actually a superiority complex and someone who's very able to teach and enjoys breaking down information. But there's different ways we communicate and show others. Uh, some, you know, this would show someone who likes to tell, likes to speak, actually likes the sound of their own voice and is commonly seen in teachers, a very sort of conic Jupiter finger. But instead we see a spatula, short Jupiter finger. This is someone who leads by example. This is someone who leads by showing and not telling. And the other thing I really wanted to point out about the Jupiter finger is the whirl. We see this whirl fingerprint here on Jupiter. And this is always seen with people who are non-conformists. People who see the world in a very different way. And in fact, they are deliberately provocative even. They uh, will challenge others on their ideals. Uh, they will throw themselves into debates. They will literally go against the grain, um, actively go against how others are acting in order to uh, allow others to see uh, what they think and feel is, is correct. And so when we see this on the Jupiter finger, this shows... Um, that 
essentially this is ambition it's it's uh not quite decision making it's more ambition and ego showing that this is actually a provocative and um intensely that's that's an important word for worlds uh, very intense people intensely single minded in uh, this person's approach to um to to provoke and change others through uh, setting an example showing rather than telling now the second uh, point here is this mercury finger and again notice the thickness of the mercury finger here it's very thick indeed slightly more pointed than uh, jupiter and this shows uh, you know and it's sort of uh, well developed tip here um, it's quite long it's you can see it's darker so it's sort of pressed down into the print a bit stronger like jupiter here so it's this is the second most uh, strongest strength of the person the mercurian um, side of this person is very is second to jupiter and it shows that this is someone who's a very able uh, communicator sure uh, very uh, verbally able but again communication is and your verbal communication only counts for seven percent of how we express and communicate so when we have a very sort of thick straight and long mercury finger that's a terrible example um, we what we actually see here are all the qualities of uh, mercury are they're strong in every sense they're profound uh, this is someone who's very able to communicate their message and again by showing rather than telling but they're still good speakers they're strong persuaders in the way they show they are leaders by example and um, you know when we have a thickness we have length and we have straightness so this person's ability uh, this person's expression is true there's no deception here uh, they are honest you know and you see actually overall all of the fingers are, are very straight and this shows alignment within their self and and mercury really is the place to look in a person's palm for uh, deceit for trickery because uh, mercury was the messenger god a trickster god uh, hermes is the uh, greek equivalent i believe of the roman god mercury and you know this a uh, messenger is the the trickster deceiver it's someone who's intelligent uh, uh, intelligently using their ability to communicate to um, to uh, to uh, spread their message and 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 this kind of mercury finger it's it's rarely seen that with this combination of length thickness and straightness this really shows almost sort of godlike abilities to communicate and express and again this is more this is far more done by showing than telling and that really puts things into perspective when we look at the jupiter finger in comparison with mercury mercury is very thick in itself but look at just how thick it is in comparison now this saturn and apollo the average in thickness but jupiter it's immense and again i just want i mean i'm coming back to this now but this is shows an incredible capability to uh, make decisions uh, to uh, fall into authoritative roles essentially to lead this is a per this is a leader without an ego and it's the rarest kind of leader you'll see in palmistry now number three when we see a square now i'm just going to make a few points about squares on the lifeline here when we see a square on inside the lifeline that's not touching the lifeline itself this shows the kind of the threat of uh, being um, the environment sort of being boxed off, being closed into a space. You're not able to move. You're imprisoned or perhaps hospitalized. It shows the person's life energies are safe, I suppose, but there there's a lack of freedom there. So when we see it on the inside of the lifeline, not touching the lifeline itself, upper Mars or Venus this shows the fear of uh, imprisonment or hospitalization and you might see this on the left hand now i did a reading quite recently i think it's number 52 uh, and you'll see that on the left hand of this person you see this 
but on the right hand you see the square connected to the lifeline itself and so it shows on the left hand it's internal so it shows the fear of imprisonment and on the right hand it shows the practical materialization the person actually went to court and uh, they they managed to get away with it and that was due to uh, their guardian angel lines that ran alongside and this is literally what you see in in my last palm reading palm reading 52 and i know all this because this person told me after i did the palm reading so it kind of put things into context and so i learned a little bit about squares in palmistry in particular so when we see it on the inside, it's a threat. When we see it attached to the lifeline, we see it actually materializing. And we see the kind of physical, practical materialization of that threat. But when we see a square forming like this, out of the convergence of the fate line and obstacles set out, or, um, you know, certain events certain decisions made to um, to better their lives or, or, or the lives of others. What we see here is, you know, it's profound to some degree. It's profound because all of the lines involved here are of great strength and thickness. So we can't ignore it. But it is this square is created out of the convergence of other lines. So it's it's imprisonment but it's imprisonment out of um it's it's unavoidable it's in a way because it's fate has a, a huge part to play in it but also the decisions made are also as a result of this circumstance as a whole now just to get a bit more specific about this at the age of 23 we see here uh, the person moving away from their environment, looking to make a change to better um, their sort of academic life, but it reaches up towards uh, this place of uh, Apollo and Mercury, and, and it's showing that they are uh, making efforts to um, get outside of their environment, but also to show who they are to the world and to better the rest of the world. In fact, it's, it's more about reaching out towards environment for, uh, you know, Apollo is peace and prosperity and happiness and joy and using your talents and being talented and mercury is obviously the place of expression and communication and learning and skills so gandhi at 23 moved to africa to uh well he moved there for 21 years and he went there to fight a law case so it's interesting we have this um you know often when you see a life uh, an ambition line like this pulling away it shows um, wanting to get outside of their environment and we see this here but we see it from a place of determination and drive um, uh, and it's sh you know t towards this sort of outside world this place of how we show and reveal ourselves this is the ivory tower part of our palm Apollo and Mercury so this combination of drive and motivation showing this person wants to change um, the world essentially change how people perceive others uh, and and to uh, work inside uh, law it shows essentially the beginnings of a political career and it's interesting to me because 21 years is up to about here so this creates this square here so for this entire time he was in africa he felt uh, and there was a very real, because this is the right hand, so this is the practical and material, there's a very real threat of um, becoming imprisoned and um, in this, this feeling of isolation. And he experienced and saw firsthand discrimination, uh, racism, segregation. And uh, due to actually breaking the law and uh, protests, he was actually imprisoned at uh, several um, periods throughout his life. So this this threat was very real and uh, very sort of physical, actual. And so this is why, again, we have another square here as well on the inside of the lifeline, this threat of this happening inside of this uh, sort of 21-year period towards the end of it in particular and beyond and, uh, you know, once he came back home, there was more sort of imprisonment for his 
political activities. And actually this right here, I believe, is potentially this is a six year period of imprisonment for protesting against um, the coercion, if you like, of the British government for uh, Indian um, Indian civilians to um, to enlist f uh, to the aid of uh, Britain against Germany in World War Two, and actually he was arrested several times for lots of different reasons, um, going against the British Indian laws, uh, tax laws, um, all all sorts of things, protests as well. Um, and um, just generally being disobedient in the eyes of the law but actually every time it was an act of resolute defiance in order to instill change and influence and inspire and that's exactly what happened and so each time the authorities arrested him actually they only sort of shot themselves in the foot and served to uh, promote his uh, ideology so number four here shows uh, this sort of great change and actually contributed towards this, um, you know, this possibility of uh, isolation and imprisonment overall throughout this large period. And this was the act of helping the impoverished, which is incredible, really, that this contributed towards the possibility of imprisonment, if you like. But that just really goes, um, you know, it sort of shows and reveals just the sort of person who he was. So he was working for um, impoverished people and um, to better the laws for equality for women as well. And this is why when we see this is a fate line that is, it's a very sort of wavy and it shows, actually this shows a couple of things, a wavy fate line like this shows uh, money troubles, shows difficulty with income, shows um, that they feel, shows a feeling of their efforts aren't rewarded in the way they feel they should be, uh, regardless how, of, of money. But in India this is known as the um, mark of the snake. And it's it's said to be a sign of adoration by the opposite sex, and as a result of this working uh, with uh, impoverished people and bettering the lives of women and trying to improve laws to uh, create equality, um, to improve the lives of women. As a result of this, he was adored by the opposite sex around the world because he was seen as someone to. Um, you know, admired as someone who was doing great things for um, generations to come for, you know, the lives of women. Now, this success line, I mean, arguably, you could say it starts around here, attached to the fate line, and it's, it's, a, it's kind of the elephant in the room, because just look how, I mean, there are several elephants really in the room with this one, but just look how, um, and, I, and my eyes darted to uh, this as soon as I said that, then because I kind of got a thought process over in my head. That I was looking for the eye of Ganesha, and it said that in Indian palmistry, this means you've been kind to animals in a past life, in particular elephants. So I just that's where my mind went when I looked over there, and he probably has got that, but it's also a sign of good karma. Uh, due to you know having been a decent person in a past life, so this success line here, it's extremely thick, isn't it? Especially as it, as time goes on, especially after this time here, and it shows that at, well, at forty-five in particular. You know this this obstacle here created in the path of the fate line you know some might say that's a mystic cross it isn't because it's not isolated this is an obstacle created out of a decision they've decided to make change and it's it's created an obstacle in their path this is political difficulties difficulties within their own career and that's political turmoil if you like at the age of 45 but from this time and onwards 
we see uh, great success. Now the thickness of this line, wherever, wherever we see thickness of lines in the chirology of, of uh, the palm, you know, the, the major palmar lines, we see uh, a reduced sort of speed of the energy. So we see a sluggishness. Uh, and, and so when we see that kind of uh, sluggishness in the lifeline, and I've just tried to show you a bit of an example here. If, if you see sluggishness like this in the lifeline, for example, it starts off really thick and it kind of gets thinner and thinner. Um, you know, it's not, it's not about the depth, it's about the, the thickness, the width of that line, the girth of it. Because depth is different. Depth is um, strength and actual constitution and health, really, it shows. But when we see thickness like this, it shows the sluggishness of that life's energy. And so what this means is uh, quite often in this sort of example that I've shown you here is obesity because they are uh, quite literally slow in their environment, in their life. They And as time goes on, they lose weight and they become more able to, uh, you know, that energy becomes more able to speed through. And so they they become healthier essentially and again it's not about the depth of the line it's about the width that's what i'm trying to get out here so when we see this width here this sluggishness of the success line the apollo line the sun line it's an excellent sign it's it's incredible it's profound it's a remarkable sun line in fact you will probably never see another sun line like this it's not about money for this person because a high starting headline like this with you know no uh, uh, you know there's no sign here of, of reaching up towards outer Mars this is not someone who's interested in material gain so this success line for this person is nothing to do with money what the sluggishness means is that it's a slow rise to success slow but inevitable now then, as promised, I'm going to show you what this means just here. Now, Mia Bashir, the legendary palmist uh, who taught uh, much of Indian palmistry to uh, Western palmists in the 60s and 70s, who actually taught uh, my mentor, Terry Stokes, who provided me with this palm print, says uh, this about stars. Uh, a star on the basal phalanx of the Saturn finger shows the act or the involvement in uh, murder. doesn't necessarily mean that they will become a victim or a murderer, but there will be some sort of involvement around the act of murder. Now, in Indian palmistry, it is said that a star on the basal phalanx of the Saturn finger is the sign of assassination and although i can appreciate this print is not of great quality there there is a star on this basal phalanx of this finger and it looks something like this so you know that that for for terry was you know quite um, a remarkable sign and i th i just wanted to sort of reveal a few things that uh, obviously Terry's already pointed out but I wanted to point out as well um, you know you have this this decision here to uh, better the lives of others which ended up resulting in um, showing who he is his worth to the world this is this is known as a money line but as I say money doesn't mean anything to this person so the truer interpretation or more accurate interpretation for this line would be that their uh, their value, their sense of value, has been actioned and actualized by uh, their efforts made to better the lives of others. And there's also a teacher square here on Jupiter, and that's formed out of the desire to move outside of their environment, this ambition line, sympathy and uh, intuition and more ambition and then this is how this teacher square is formed and again this is a true leader a teacher uh, by example so 
let me know what your thoughts are on this palm reading uh, I've enjoyed this one as I say this is Terry's palm reading but I wanted to uh, point out a few things some of my own observations as well as uh, sort of highlight what Terry has already said and I'll put the link of uh, Terry's sort of original reading uh, in, in, the com in the description of this video so let me know if you've got any thoughts on who you'd like me to read for next Sunday and uh, thanks for watching and please please subscribe